that our speaker tonight is William Murchison. Uh, the, his website, if you haven't read it, is really very cool. It talks all about all his time as editor at the Dallas Morning News, and when he was the, the professor of, journal, of, of journalism mm -hmm. down at Baylor, and all of his awards, which are numerous. But the thing that, that I really would like to get started, and I know you'll want to thank him a lot, but it's a great pleasure to have him here, but his, his, his skills in being a commentator are the ones that, that I like the best, but there's one phrase out of his book that I want you to hear. Our mistake, in other words, has been to overvalue cultural reflexes to underestimate the power of the Christian gospel to knock flat all divisions, all perspectives, by whomsoever adopted or concocted. Well, that's strong stuff, y'all. That is good stuff. So if you get a chance, I know you're going to enjoy them tonight. If you get a chance, make sure you get over there to the book table. I would like to introduce for, for this our speaker series this evening, Mr. William Murchison. Thank you. Can you, can you all hear me? All right? Yes. Turn it off. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I can only say, and there you talk right into the end. You got to talk right into it. Talk right into it. How about this? Yes. I did it my way. <laughs> this thing always me out. I, I can only say, in appreciation of the invitation, to come over here tonight and, and to, to meet with many friends and, uh, and co-conspirators in the cause of, of saving the, the church, that, that I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful for the, for the very perplexities that have brought about the, the, the kind of, of um, informal, informal, and, and semi-formal associations that, that we would not have had had there been no crisis in the church to, to remind us of, of the need for our being together and leaning on each other and leaning most of all on God, our, our Heavenly Father. We, as Episcopalians, tend uh, a lot of the time, I, I, I think, to, uh, to coast along with without a reference to the, to the great uh, calling that has, that has brought us together as Episcopalians. That, that is to say, well, we think being Episcopalians is a very good thing, or Anglicans, uh, as, as we more and more say, and uh, that without necessarily examining the premises of, of that commitment. When, on the contrary, the, we, we're slapped in the face uh, as, as if by a wet towel with the, some of the realities of, of the, the secular world. Then it happens that we, we think our premises through. We remember why we have gotten together in the first place, why we are a church together, and what we must do to remain a church together and a dedicated people to God. Now, it, is a, it's a wonderful thing also for me to be in Fort Worth because, simply because I, um, I miss you all so much as a member of the Diocese of Dallas. Why did we ever let you go? <laughs> I've never figured this out. Well, there was an idea that the, the, uh, the bishop at that time felt that, that we might have two Orthodox dioceses, fully Orthodox, and, and if he cut one loose from the other, and, and uh, I don't think that was the wisest decision that Bishop Davies has ever made, but God bless him. He, he was a, um, he's a great man and a great leader, and, I, and I, I welcome the continued friendship and association of the Diocese of, of Fort Worth uh, with the Diocese, with the Episcopal Diocese of Dallas and, and the common quest of making the world hospitable to Christianity, not the other way around making Christianity hospitable to the world, as so often is, is the, uh, the case as represented to us by our theological leaders. And I'm very happy for the chance to talk to you tonight. 
I want to leave time for the questions. At the end, I'll be happy to answer. Be happy to, to um, let you look at any of these books I've got back here and, and uh, take one or two away if you'd like to do so. And I'll be happy to spend as much time here tonight as you'd like me to do. But thank you, thank you for having me, and thank you for having my wife Nancy. We're we're both delighted to uh, to be here. Both both time. Low ebb among us. Vice and profanity openly prevail in our city. Our Sabbaths are boldly profaned by the most open and flagitious enormities. Our young men in general were wholly devoted to pleasure and sensuality, and very few were solicitous about the one thing needful. Now, I hate to tell you, it's too late to do anything about it. Because this was Philadelphia in 1764. <laughs> and the words of those, as you might have deduced, flagitious. When was the last time you said flagitious? Uh, I hope you didn't have the occasion to do so. But, but uh, uh, these are the words of Dr. Benjamin Rush, one of the most esteemed surgeons of of uh, colonial America, who died in 1813. It shows us that, that some things that we think of, of extraordinary, of, as being extraordinary, are in fact enduring realities in human experience. Now here's another piece of news. It's a little bit older. As the fishes are taken in an evil net, and as the birds are, that are caught in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them. And that's from the Bible. Actually, specifically from the book of Ecclesiasticus, one of, one of my favorite books from the Apocrypha. That's that section of the Bible we never read because it doesn't have canonical status. But these words were compiled by the grandson of Jesus, the son of Sirach, about 132 B.C. Now you see the, the extraordinary tests and, and vexations that the human, uh, the human community faces are, are rarely new ones. They appear in different forms. They appear in different shapes. And we need to keep that very firmly in mind. It might, I just say it might, give us some appreciation of what the Christian is up to in the world of today. I said the Christian. Now what did I mean? Me, you, your spouse, the nice guy at the dry cleaners, or maybe the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church, who in Australia a few weeks ago challenged the church to, and I'm quoting now, fix the isolation of the leper of the, or the different one, the other, in order to bathe in the river of freedom, to be washed clean of the, the sin of thinking that some are different enough to be pushed out of the community, to free them for social isolation, to, speak, to free them from social isolation or cultural imprisonment. Or is it the, is the Christian, the Episcopal Bishop of Central New York, who sold the Church of the Good Shepherd in one of his communities to a Muslim awareness group and watched, or perhaps didn't watch, the, uh, the new Islamic tenants remove all the Christian symbols and replace them with symbols of their own faith. 